Hello and welcome to Course 1, Lesson 1 of Japanese from Zero. For those of you that have been following the series, who are for those of you that are using the book, or for those of you that are on the online course, or have just been watching the videos on YouTube, uh, you'll know that we have done pre-lessons A, B, C, and D prior to this lesson. Now those lessons, while being very important, are not as important as the main lessons, and that's why they're called pre-lessons. They're important but not as important as the main lessons. So you do need to know how pronunciation works. Uh, you do no need to know numbers. You do need to know what to say when you're going into someone's house and stuff like that. But I am not a big fan of teaching a bunch of phrases. I don't like phrase books. Phrase books really teach you one thing and they don't give you the ability to make your own sentences. So what we're gonna do starting from this video is go through actual grammar and learn how to make our own sentences because that's how you get good at a language. So today's topic is creating simple sentences. Now, uh, for anyone in this video right now watching it, I have to assume you've already been through the lesson. I assume that you know the new words so that we're not going to spend a lot of time learning the new words. We're just going to learn some of the keywords that we need. So here are some words and phrases that we need. Uh, the keyword here that we need is Nani. Now, nani, actually, we're not going to use that word at all because nani means what, but it's not, it can't be used in a sentence most of the time, at least today it can't be. Later on, we'll learn ways to use it in a sentence because nani, in this case so far, what you know is it can be used like this. Nani? What? You heard something? You didn't understand? You could say nani. Not the best way to say it, but hey, at this level, you take what you can get, right? What we are going to be using is the non, non version. So we're gonna, we're gonna learn how to use that. Now here's a major concept. This is called des. Now des, even though it's written as desu, it's gonna be pronounced like des. This is the most natural way to say it. So I want you to do it that way. Now des means is, am, and are. It covers all of them. Uh, if if you've ever taught English, one of the hardest things to teach in English is is, am, and are. The be verbs, like for example, I am. That's fine, I am, but I can't say he am, and I can't say she am. I have to move to they are, or he is, or she is, we are, I am, you are. Like It changes based on what we have. The good news is that in Japanese, it doesn't matter who you're talking about, Des can mean all three of those things, so we never have to have a different version of des. We can always just use des to say it is, I am, you are, he is, they are, all of those things. Okay? Now there's a phrase that we're going to be using today. It's nan desu ka? Nan desu ka? And that just means what is it? It doesn't mean what is this. It doesn't mean what is that. We're going to learn that in the next lesson. It just means what is it. Now, obviously, if you're holding something in your hand, in English, it doesn't really make sense to say, what is it? So it would be translated as, what is this? But it really isn't. When you learn the grammar behind working with a topic, which we'll do in the next lesson, you'll, that'll make sense. Right now, just remember that this means, what is it? Nan desu ka? And you could never say, nani desu ka? It has to be, nan desu ka? All right, now let's dig a little bit into this des thing just to make sure that we understand it. So des is, it doesn't matter what level your Japanese becomes, you are going to use des in all levels of Japanese. I don't care if Japanese from Zero had a book 5,000, you would still have to use des. Des is the core of the Japanese language. Just like is, am, are, the be verb in English, is the core of the English language. It's very important. It is very important. We use it all the time. It wasn't what I was going for, but you understand what I'm saying. It's important. So it means it is, they are, I am, he is, she is. So you're thinking maybe, well, how do I know? How do I know when it means she is? And how do I know when it means he is? It's all context. Context means the situation. It depends on what's happening. The thing about learning Japanese in a textbook or on a course like we're doing right now is a lot of times there isn't context. So Learning a language is actually harder than using a language because when you use a language, 
There's a lot of extra information. For example, I'm at a party and there's people and I can and, and I know that people are dancing and I know what the su the subject is what, what could possibly happen in a party. Uh, there's uh, people eating, people dancing, people singing. It's loud. There's a certain scope of what can happen at that party. So if I hear something that someone says, I'm going to apply it to that thing. So I my my Japanese will be better at a party than in a classroom because I'm limited to what happens at a party. If I'm at a party, right, not a zoo, and I hear the word uma for horse, I'm not going to expect it, right? So it probably wouldn't make sense, right? But if you hear uma at a zoo, your brain is already thinking, okay, I'm at a zoo, so uma must mean an animal of some type, so I'm going to flip through my vocabulary for that. Your brain is very compartmentalized. It's very smart. So context is everything. And we're going to talk, well, I'll show you how you'll understand that des can mean all of these things based on context. All right, and just a little note here that the sound is des, not desu. Now again, there are people that will say desu. It's not wrong, it just sounds a little bit weird. You have to know what you're doing in order to say desu. Like for example, I'll give you an example, okay? Uh, so desu, a girl's mad, and she says, you don't know this phrase yet, we don't learn it until lesson three, but so this means yes, that's correct. It means it's correct. So let's say this girl, you're having a fight and you say something or her response is, yes, that's right. She might say, so this, hmm? she's upset. She's not going to say, so this, which is kind of nice sounding, right? She's going to say, so this, it shows attitude. That's why I really don't want you to use it. All right. I wasn't planning on saying that. But these are unscripted. All right, so let's go to the next one. So here's the concept. Here's how desk works. Now, in English, we say, for example, it is, or the, the, uh, uh, it, not it, uh, these are scissors. And we say, it is a pen. And this is a ruler. We say it like that, where the, the thing comes at the end, right? We say, it is, and then the thing at the end. In Japanese, it is reversed. The verb always comes at the end of a Japanese sentence. You're going to learn this later on. There's always a verb at the end of a Japanese sentence. And in this case, des covers that. Des is the be verb in Japanese. It is, he is, she is. Okay. So when you have this maru maru des, it means it is a maru maru. Or he is a maru maru. Or she is a maru maru. Okay. So let's look at this. What is this? What is this? This is a cat. Okay. And how do you say cat in Japanese? You say it's Neko. It's one of the words in this lesson. So if I want to say, it's a cat, I just say, Neko des. It's a cat. Neko des. It's so simple, right? All right? Nan desu ka? There's that phrase. What is it? Nan desu ka? Inu desu. It's a dog. Okay? Very simple. There's, it would never be des inu, right? It's always going to be inu des. It's a dog, okay? This is your basic structure. All right, so, so far, des has only meant it is. It hasn't meant anything else. But what if a person comes up? A person shows up, his name is the very basic Tanaka, right? We actually have learned two names so far, Tanaka and Kobayashi. Okay, so these are the names we're going to use because that's what you know. So Tanaka. His name is Tanaka. So if someone says Tanaka des, what does that mean? It could never mean it is Tanaka because that's rude. Remember, Japanese never changes. It's always going to be Tanaka des. It's English that you have to make sound nice. And you would never say it is Tanaka. You say he is Tanaka or he's Tanaka, right? He's Tanaka. Tanaka des. Okay. What if, so here it's a guy, right? What if another person with the name Tanaka shows up and it's a girl? Now we have context. We're at a party and we see a girl. It's going to be she is. There's no way it's going to be anything else. It's going to be she is Tanaka. And how does the Japanese change? It doesn't. Tanaka des. She's Tanaka. This is why it's really hard to come in the middle of a Japanese conversation sometimes because you don't know What's happening sometimes? You know, you just don't know. You don't know if it's a boy or a girl that they're talking about. Whereas in English, we're constantly saying, 
oh yeah, he, and then she, and then oh, and then he, 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 and then he, and then he, and then he, and you're constantly reminded of if it's a boy or a girl. In Japanese, that doesn't happen, ever. You, you can do it. Yeah, those of you who have studied Japanese on your own, those of you who are independent, you'll know there is a word for he, it's kare. And there is a word for her, it's kanojo. But it's typically not used like, like as common as we do. It's almost, if you, if you compare it to how much we use in English and how much it's used in Japanese, it's rare in Japanese to hear those words, to hear those words. All right. So, so far we've seen des become it is, he is, and she is. Who's this? Who's that handsome guy? No beard on him, but that's me. We're going to call that me. And his name is Joji. Joji. And I am going to say, I am George. And the way I'm going to do it is, Joji des, I am George. Done. Now I have said I am George. We learned how to say I am, it is, she is, he is, all of those with one thing. That's, it's so powerful. Now, remember that picture where we had a dog and it said Inu des. Well, guess what? Japanese is another cool thing that makes learning English, uh, learning, sorry, means makes learning it easier. Now, in English, we have this thing called plurals. A plural is when there's more than one. In English, we add an S. For example, one pen is a pen. Two, I can't even say it. I can't say two pen is pens. In English, you must say two pens. You can never say two pen, okay? Ruler, if there's one, it's ruler. If it's plural, it is it is uh, rulers, okay? That's how English works, but Japanese doesn't work that way. A dog and dogs are both inu. A cat and cats are both cats. Whew. That's easy. It's kind of nice, but it does, if you're, if you're so used to English, especially if English is your second language, you're like, oh, how do I make plural in Japanese? Well, you don't, you don't, you, you don't make it. Now, later on, we will learn a crazy way to do it but it's never used here, never. A dog is always just inu, and a dogs are always just inu, all right? So for example, this sentence that we had, inu des, means they're, they, oh, sorry, I have a typo. It said the are dogs, it should be, should be they are dogs. Let's go ahead and fix that. Let's go ahead and fix that right now, because uh, I'm sometimes called a perfectionist. Some people have said, uh, I just hate having, you know, little mistakes. Uh, although, man, they are frequent. So, uh, inu des means they are dogs and it's a dog. And it's all context that makes it happen. All right? If you didn't have two dogs, they wouldn't be they. All right. So, now, let's work through this a little bit. If I asked you, uh, nan desu ka? It means what is it? How would I say, is it a dog? It's kind of a review. Is it a dog? Inu desu ka? That also means, are they dogs? It means both, are they dogs and is it a dog? Okay. Uh, let's see. Next one. Tanaka-san. Sorry, I got a little bit distracted because I did do this live stream, but it looks paused to me. Like, I don't see anything on the screen. So, hopefully, it's all still there. Uh, so, what does this mean? Tanaka-san desu ka? Here's the thing, you don't know. If I just said Tanaka-san desu ka, you don't know, unless there is context. All right, let's say I asked it to you. Now what did I say? I looked at you and said, Tanaka-san desu ka? Means are you Mr. Tanaka or Miss Tanaka? Depends, right? Because remember, san, can mean Mr. and Miss. It all depends on the context, right? If you're a girl, then it means Mrs. or Miss. If you're married, it's Mrs. If you're not married, it's Miss. This is kind of a great thing about Japanese. One thing can do a lot of things, at least in these, in this this case here. Later on, there will be other things that we'll learn that are different than that. So, Tanaka-san desu ka can mean, are you Mr. Tanaka? Are you Mrs. Tanaka? Or if I'm pointing to someone way over there that's a girl, then it would mean, is she Miss Tanaka? Or if I'm putting it a man, is he Mr. Tanaka? Or maybe I'm talking about myself. 
Am I Mr. Tanaka, by the way? That would never work. Tanaka-san desu ka would never mean, am I Tanaka? Why? Because you can never have san after your own name. You never put Mr. on your own name. Am I Mr. Trombley? Makes no sense. You'd say, am I Trombley? Of course, you wouldn't even ask this question. It's kind of weird, right? But if you were going to say, am I Tanaka, you would say, Tanaka desu ka? Maybe the scenario is uh, you're, you're doing a play in school. And sometimes, like, when you're learning Japanese, your teachers will say, okay, we're going to do... We're going to do plays, and you're going to be Mr. Taka, and you're going to be Kobayashi. So you practice, and then you forget, and the next day you're like, oh, excuse me, um, Tanaka desu ka? Am, am I Tanaka? That would be when it would work. All right, so uh, these are just showing you what it can be. Now, we're going to learn a new word that's not in the lesson. It's Amerikajin. Amerikajin. Amerikajin means American. So this is... Now, this is a real-world question that will happen to you in the very, very beginning of learning Japanese. It can happen probably in day one, right after you've said, Hajimemashite, Joji to moshimasu, Yoroshiku onegaishimasu. They might say, oh, excuse me, I don't mean to be rude, but... Amerikajin desu ka? Amerikajin desu ka? What does that mean? Are you American? Amerikajin desu ka? There it is. All right. Now we need to learn some new words. Very simple words. It's how to say no and yes, because we're going to be answering questions next, okay? It's ie, ie. And you can do this. Do this with your hand. Make sure if you, it, here's the thing. You can do things to improve your Japanese. If you do a little bit of gesturing, even, you know, if the gesturing will save you when you screw up. For example, ie is long, right? It's e, e, e. But let's say you said, ie. Ie means house because it's short. Ie. Ie means house. But, but if you did this, they would hear ie. And you'd be, be shake your head, do whatever you're going to do. Be like, nah. You could, you could literally say yes and do this and they would understand that you said, yeah, hi, 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 hi. They would get it. So, so just, I, I would say, try to, in the beginning, use your body to help relay what you're trying to say. Okay. Hi. Yes. Hi, hi, see, hi, I'm giving them a visual clue. Hi, it gives them context, right? Okay, ie, ie, no, ie, hi, hi. It's not hi, it's very abrupt ending. Hi, 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 all right? So I'm gonna ask you a question. How, well, I'm, how would you say? How would you say, is it a cat? How would you say, is it a cat? I don't know. <laughs> it's neko desu ka? Neko desu ka? No. How would you answer? We just learned how to say hai and ie. How would you say, yes, it's a cat? Hai. Neko desu. Hai. Neko desu. Perfect. All right. What if I asked a different question? What if I said to you, how would you say, you have this picture up and you say, is it a dog? How would you say that? Is it a dog? Inu desu ka? Inu desu ka? Obviously, it's not a dog, right? Unless that kind of dog might exist, but that's not a dog. That is a cat, obviously. So how would you say, no, no. Ie, neko desu. Ie, neko desu. Now, what if someone looks at you and asks this question? They say, Amerikajin desu ka? Amerikajin desu ka? And they might do this, they, they do this all the time. Amerikajin desu ka? This literally is your signal that they are talking about you. If you were talking about someone else and they all of a sudden said America Jin Desu would be about them. But they, they do this a lot. America Jin Desu ka? America Jin Desu ka? Are you American? And if you are, you say, Hi, America Jin Hi. I'm saying it like a cute girl voice. Hi, America Jin Desu. Desu. Oh, it's being cute. See how I lengthened it and then said the su? See, there's reasons when you can say su, but typically you're just going to say, Hi. 
But what if you're Chinese? We're going to learn another word. A lot of Chinese people, and a lot of Chinese people study Japanese. So, I don't know why. It's kind of interesting. Ie, Chugokujin des. Chu long. Chugokujin des. Ie, Chugokujin des. All right, so that's how we do easy sentence back and forth. You ask a question, you can answer yes or no. We will do more in the next lesson where we start introducing topics in lesson two. This is extremely important. And it's a great continuation of what we just did. I will see you then. Bye-bye.